Welcome to the Sweep Here Machine Embroidery YouTube channel. I'm James and I'm back with another exciting Keep It Simple Sew Along design. Today we are making the elegant embroidered table runner, featuring amazing floral patterns and four beautifully designed blocks. And you know what the best part is? You can make the blocks in either the 5x7, 6x10 or the 7x12 hoop, giving you the flexibility to choose what size works best for you. In this video tutorial, I'll be demonstrating the stitch out of block three and the construction of this amazing table runner, and also showing you an easy way to add backing and binding to the table runner. To get the most out of this video tutorial, be sure to follow your photograph written instructions that were provided with your purchase in conjunction with this video tutorial. Also, don't forget to join our March Keeping It Simple So Long Facebook group for the competition details and to receive a 30% discount code to use at checkout for this design. And be sure to post photos of your completed table runner to go into the monthly competition and maybe win some cool prizes at the end of the month. If you found this video tutorial helpful, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more amazing tutorial content like this one. Good luck and happy sewing. All right. Let's get started. First I'll show you how to make block three. You'll need to make two of these blocks for the runner. First, hoop up cutaway stabilizer in the hoop and load the design onto your machine. Use applique scissors for trimming the batting and fabric. Place batting one on top of the hoop and stitch the batting down. Remove the hoop from your machine and trim the batting about one to two millimeters from the stitching. Now stitch the place and line for the quilted background. Repeat the applique process with the top quilted background using fabric A. Repeat the applique process with the bottom quilted background using fabric A. Embroider the quilting. Trim, leaving the excess fabric in the seams. Repeat the applique process with the embroidered background using fabric B. Trim, leaving the excess fabric in the seams. Embroider the satin stitch where the fabric A and fabric B meets. Now use the diagram on your instructions to work out which section of embroidery is next in the sequence. Embroider the navy section. Embroider the orange section. Embroider the teal section. Embroider the magenta section. Embroider the peach section. Embroider the yellow section. Embroider the 
and brought to the pink section. Well done, you have now completed the stitch out of your first block three. Remove your work from the hoop and trim the seams about half an inch with your rotary cutter and ruler. Now once trimmed, hold the side until all your blocks are made. Joining the blocks. Lay your blocks on a flat surface. Place the first two blocks right sides together and pin along one edge lining up the border seam and satin stitch points the best you can. Take your time with this pinning process to ensure everything is lined up perfectly. Now move over to your sewing machine and start by tack stitching where the satin stitches line up. And then continue sewing along the side seam. Stitch just inside the border already stitched on the blocks so the stitching will not be seen on the right side later. Continue attaching the third block using the same method. Open the seams and iron them flat. Remember to use an applique sheet if you are using PU leather or cork. Continue this until you have joined the remaining blocks in that row together. If needed, trim the edges to make them even. Creating the back and binding of the runner. Place backing binding fabric on your table, wrong side facing up. Then place your sewn runner on top of the backing binding fabric, wrong sides together. Pin them together. To keep all the layers of the runner together, we can stitch in the ditch. This process will help keep the seams flat during the laundry process and will keep it flat during its lifetime. Stitching in the ditch is an invisible finish on the front and the stitching lines are only visible on the back side of the runner. Ensure the bobbin thread on the underside of the runner matches the fabric and the top thread on top of the runner. Ensure the bobbin thread on the underside of the runner matches the fabric and the top thread on the top of the runner is invisible thread. Decide what seams need ditch stitching on the runner. Not every seam needs to be stitched. Choose the main seams that will hold the central blocks flat is quite acceptable. Trim the excess backing so it is exactly one and a quarter inches bigger than the runner. This exact fabric will be used as the binding.
starting on any side. Fold the backing fabric in half and then fold in half again, making sure you fold it just over your seam stitching and pin. Continue pinning your binding until you reach your first corner. When you get to the corner, try and make a nice mitered corner. Turn your binding in at the corner and continue folding the same way as we did for the first side of the binding. You can iron your folds as you go if this helps with your mitered corners. Fold a final time and pin the corner in place. Continue pinning right around the runner. Starting anywhere, sew the binding to the runner just inside the folded edge of the binding. If you want, change your bobbin thread to match your backing. When you get to the corner, simply leave your needle down and lift the foot and rotate the runner. Put the foot down and continue stitching in this fashion until you're right around the runner. Now press with your iron and perfect, your runner is now complete. Well folks, I hope you enjoyed Sweepy's February Sew Along. Remember to post photos of your completed projects on the Sew Along Facebook group. That's all from me this month. If you found this video tutorial helpful, please like and subscribe. For more beautiful designs like the elegant embroidered table runner, shop at Sweepy.com. That is SWPEA.com. See you next time.